Hello and welcome to Rando Tech Info. And today we're going to try to answer what should be a fairly simple question. Do you need a 5G phone in 2021? Now, I say it's a simple question, but obviously if it were really simple, I would need to make this video about it. So the answer is not entirely simple, but it's not entirely complicated either. But before we can answer the question of whether or not you need a 5G phone in 2021, let's quickly cover the state of 5G and where it sits right now. The other thing I want to mention is, is that I'm based out of the United States. So when I talk about this, that's going to be the slant or the lens that I'm talking about this through. So obviously when I talk about specific carriers, I'll be talking about US carriers and what type of 5G they use. However, if you are in another part of the world, you still may find some of this video to be useful, especially when trying to decide whether just the 5G technology itself is worth it or not for you to upgrade. So as of right now, there are three types of 5G and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each. And first, we're going to start with what's called low band 5G or sub 6 5G. So this form of 5G has the best coverage. It doesn't quite have the footprint of 4G coverage here in the US just yet, but it's getting there and it's getting there pretty quickly. If you have a 5G compatible device that was designed for use here in the US, it can definitely use low band 5G. You don't need a special version of the phone or special antennas to use this version of 5G. If you have a 5G compatible phone, it can use low band 5G. If you have uh, the little 5G icon lighting up on your 5G phone right now, that's probably the type of 5G it's getting. The downside to low band 5G is it's not that much faster than 4G, and in some cases, it's actually slower than 4G. So while the coverage is decent for low band 5G right now, towards the end of 2020, it's not going to give you that transformative experience that the carriers would like you to believe comes with the 5G experience. And speaking of carriers, all three of the major carriers here in the US use it, uh, T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T. T-Mobile, I think, has a little bit more of a head start than the other two, but AT&T and Verizon do also have it, and all three are making it a priority right now to get it to as many customers as possible. So next up, we're gonna talk about high band or what's more commonly known as millimeter wave 5G. So when you see commercials, most likely by Verizon, about 5G and you see those crazy, crazy upload speeds, crazy download speeds, way faster than the speeds you probably get in your home, that's millimeter wave 5G. And this is the 5G that the carriers want you to think is 5G. They want you to think that when you're getting 5G coverage, that this is always gonna be the type of 5G you're getting. And that is quite simply not the case. First off, only Verizon has any type of significant millimeter wave 5G footprint here in the US. And I say significant, put quotes around that because it's actually not too significant with them either. Millimeter wave 5G cannot travel very far. When I say it can't travel very far, I mean it can travel about a city block. And it can't pass through objects. It can't pass through telephone poles. It can't pass through walls to get into buildings. It can't pass through other human beings. So if anything gets between you and the cell tower that is the millimeter wave 5G cell tower, you won't get any 5G coverage. It just simply goes away. So very, very few people get this. Verizon has really been trying to focus on putting this in like high traffic areas like stadiums and whatnot. They're not even trying to get it to people's homes right now. So while it is crazy fast, it is not a good reason to buy a phone for this type of 5G because so few people get it. In addition, you have to buy special phones that utilize this type of 5G. It has to have special millimeter wave antennas in it. Now some phones, have this automatically, like the iPhones all utilize millimeter wave 5G. But there are other phones out there, like OnePlus's phones, you have to buy special versions of their phones, usually from Verizon, to utilize the millimeter wave 5G technology. And there's usually a premium that comes with that, usually of around $100 for a type of technology that you're hardly ever going to get to use. So while millimeter wave 5G looks good, it's a very sexy technology. It's what the carriers are really trying to use to promote 5G. It's not practical right now. Very few people get it. And to be honest, I don't know if there's much of a future for this technology here in the US or anywhere else for that matter or not. So last but not least, that leaves us with mid-band 5G. And mid-band 5G is kind of a combination of the other two forms of 5G. So it's faster than sub-6 5G, although the coverage is not 
as good, but the coverage is better than millimeter wave 5G, but it's not as fast. It's kind of the happy medium, and it's actually the kind of 5G that's used in most other parts of the world uh, that aren't here in the United States. And of the major US carriers, T-Mobile is really the only carrier utilizing this technology right now. In fact, it's one of the main reasons they bought Sprint was to pick up Sprint's mid-band 5G coverage. So they wanted it, they bought Sprint, now they have it. That doesn't mean T-Mobile will be the only uh, game in town forever with this type of 5G. They definitely have a huge head start. But the FCC is talking about auctioning off more mid-band 5G uh, wavelength. So hopefully the other carriers can get some of this and be competitive with T-Mobile moving forward because honestly, this is probably where the future of 5G lies in the US. So now that we have an understanding of what the 5G landscape looks like, let's go back to our original question, which is, do you need a 5G phone in 2021? And the short answer is definitely no. You do not need a 5G phone uh, in 2021. You don't need a 5G phone right now. The 5G technology is still very much in its infancy. The 5G that most people are getting, which the coverage still is not as good as 4G coverage, but even if you do get 5G coverage right now, it's probably not that much faster or, or faster at all than the 4G coverage that you're used to. You're not gonna notice any difference. Talk to somebody who has a 5G phone. The vast majority of those people will tell you. 5G is not this transformative technology that we've been promised that it is, at least not yet. So you can be totally happy with your 4G phones. Now, there is a caveat to this, and that is if you're looking for a new phone anyway, let's say that your phone is three or four years old and you're the type of person who only upgrades their phone every uh, two, three or four years, then it might make some sense to go ahead and get the 5G functionality on the next phone you get. 5G phones are getting cheaper, especially if you move out of the flagship space. If you're willing to come down to that $700 price point or that $750 price point, you can get a 5G phone, a good 5G phone. And that will give you a certain amount of future proofing. So you don't have to worry about uh, getting inferior coverage moving forward as the carriers funnel more and more of their resources into 5G and when they drop their 3G networks, which they're going to probably start doing next year, you will still get really nice coverage uh, two, three, four years down the line. So if you're looking to get a new phone anyway, 5G might be worth looking at, but you don't need a 5G phone. And if you're happy with the phone you have right now for crying out loud, don't go out and spend 1200 bucks on a new phone just to get 5G. Well, that's all the useful information I have today about whether or not you need a 5G phone in 2021. What are your thoughts about this? Specifically, let us know if you're somebody with a 5G device. Let us know down in the comments what your experience has been so far so we can all learn from each other and all make more educated buying decisions moving forward. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.